Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Email Einstein, the podcast by Flowium. I'm your host, Vera Sadlak, and uh, welcome back to part two of our um, episodes with Andrei Boychuk. Andrei, nice to have you back. <laughs> Yeah, we are, we are we on the fire today, like to record 46 yeah. episodes for the next year. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, no, but I'm like happy to talk to you today about all of the ways to like improve the flow strategy for Black Friday, Cyber Monday um, and for holiday season. You're probably like the best person to talk about it. And like when I think of this, like, yes, yeah, sir, you were saying something? Yeah, because I have a like, big news to share with the audience and actually you, you're not aware. So maybe even you're like uh, supposed to, you might say like, oh, Andre, I don't want to do this. Let's, let's remove it. But this is experiment, 100% experiment because okay. uh, for how, how, for how long we're doing the podcast? I mean, you're doing the podcast for like two, two years, years, three, two years, two, I think. Yeah. Two and a half, two. Yes. And I believe it's not fair to kind of to you and to us and to the audience like there's only one way communication so you you're talking to you sharing the knowledge and we sharing the knowledge of the guests so this is just experiment we'll see how it works but we created um in whatsapp we created community and uh for podcast listeners so if you have any questions to any episode that we have i'll be there if we are, say, I'm okay, there. She, she, I joined oh, it. You're today, there. Andy. Okay, yeah, I'm perfect, there. Perfect. There are like two of us, I think, for now. <laughs> yeah, there's so, so yeah. So please, if you're if you're the third one and listening, please join us so we're not lonely there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you you just go to flowing.com slash WhatsApp, and uh, it will be a redirect to that uh, community. We want to just to know who you are. Uh, we curious to know what kind of questions you might have, what topics you're interested in, and we will invite celebrities, uh, people well known in the industry, brands you want to hear from. Uh, and spoiler alert, we're supposed to have what Neil yeah. Patel on the podcast. Speaking speaking yeah. of celebrities, next yeah. week, you guys, you don't want to miss next week's podcast because we'll have yeah. one and only Neil Patel. And, and Andre is a big fanboy. Yeah. So I <laughs> <laughs> he actually even sent me his um, like list of questions to ask Neil Patel. So yeah, that's that's exciting. I'm I'm really happy to have him on our podcast because he's the guy that honestly all of us probably was learning email marketing or like marketing from. And it's such a big honor to have him here on our podcast. Anyways, you guys, next Tuesday, you don't want to miss it. Well, you guys, you don't want to miss next week's podcast. So definitely um, join us. It's going to be fun. And if you ever have like any topics that you want to learn more about, any like questions that you have to us or to the community, send them to that uh, channel. And today's episode, we will be talking about fine tuning your life cycle strategy or your flow strategy for the big holiday season. Think of it like tuning up your car before a big road trip. You wouldn't want to set off without checking the oil, right? Well, probably it's not for you, Andre. It's not uh, yeah. it's not very relevant for you because you're driving electric car as of lately. But uh, yeah, I still like this for analogy. So I'm going to Oh yeah. Actually, uh, I had a, a Tesla experience myself. We brought our friends Tesla to Newfoundland. And for those of you guys who are not from Canada, Newfoundland is like a super, super remote uh, province. It's like an island in the, in the Atlantic, Atlantic Ocean. It's actually very close to where Titanic sunk. I don't know why I'm saying that. But the long story short, um, there are like not so many electric car chargers, not just like Tesla, any chargers there. So that was a challenge. And I, there was like more than one time when we were pulling to that charging station was like 1% um, battery. It, it, was, it was scary, but it was like so fun to drive. Yeah. So anyways... Uh, back to flows, you guys. Andrew, it's fantastic to have you on this podcast because um, you can shed the light on like how to 
um, how to prepare your list and how to prepare your flows for Black Friday, Cyber Monday season. Andre, what strategies has proven like the, to be the most effective in building that like anticipation for Black Friday, Cyber Monday season? What's your take yeah, on that? Yeah, so this is, I mean, you, you, you shared the, the idea of strategy, like anticipation. We need to tease our kind of the, the biggest promotion of the year. And it worked for the past few years and more and more brands are doing this. Uh, at first, I heard about this idea from uh, Ezra Firestone from a Smart Marketer. It's not my idea and I'm not sure if it's his idea, but anyway, he promoted a lot uh, and it works perfectly for e-commerce brands. So the strategy here is uh, you are creating s offer Oh, sorry, you, you're creating anticipation like, hey, um, you're teasing out that Black Friday, Cyber Monday will be the biggest sale of the year or the biggest uh, promo or the biggest, I don't know, like something you will give it uh, from the entire year. And the goal is they need to opt in to be the first one to find out about this offer. So basically, you are building list your list um, of people who want that offer. And we do recommend to start doing this starting November 1st. Uh, why November 1st? Because I mean, the day before it's a, October, uh, it's a Halloween and a lot of mm -hmm. brands do different kind of slash, slash sales, flash sales, uh, the, the pro product launches, uh, different kind Makes of stuff sense. for, for a uh, Halloween. So we s strongly recommend for November 1st, but again, this is generic. So because brand to brand might differ, but starting November 1st, you should start uh, advertising your uh, Black Friday, Cyber Monday hmm. uh, upcoming sale. Just make and sure. I love this idea. Yeah. Just make sure to turn off all your pop ups for 10% discount and so forth. Or don't, because what we've done last year, um, we pretty much created this strategy exclusively for existing like Clavio uh, profiles for existing customers. So what I've done like last year with my um, with one of my clients, we created this um, pop up that captured um, existing Clavio um, subscribers, and when someone went to the website, they were not shown the regular. Uh, pop up that welcomes like new customers, but they were captured with that early Black Friday deals um, pop up. Um, and then they went into a, like an early bird Black Friday flow. Um, and what was funny about that flow is that um, it consisted of like three emails. And the first email was like literally saying like, don't buy anything today uh, because like the big sale is coming your way uh, soon. And guess what? The conversion of that on of that email the email where literally all we said was like, don't buy anything today, put maybe something into the, into your cart or like shop around, but like, don't buy anything. The conversion was like something like 4% or like 5%, which is like a lot for this. Um, maybe for it this was, a, was it like teenager brand or something? Because like you think Actually, teenager, no. if you say something like don't do it, they will do it. It's the, it's the brand for like older generation. It's like the uh, boomers kind of like people in there, like uh, 60, 70. It's a supplement brand. And uh, yeah, normally, so they are, you know, like when they receive it, like you will, uh, how do you say it? Like, it's like a who, who are you to tell me what I should do or not do it? <laughs> Actually, now when I think about it, don't tell like, me what to do. Yeah. You young people, you young generation, you have it easy. Maybe, maybe it was a reason, but that not just like one brand that I tested. I tested this strategy with like other brands. And I would think that like when you're sending the teaser email, it, it shouldn't convert because you're like literally telling people like, don't buy anything. This is like more for like relationship building, if anything, right? It's more like to to build the trust between the brand and the and the customer. But actually, so it does I think you're. Revenue. I will respectfully disagree with you. And again, we just will have a debate, a small debate here. Uh, the the challenge, the problem I see here, um, we are assuming here that um, people have that tracking code, Clavio tracking code, or any other ESP tracking code on their browser. But let's say if they switch from uh, their desktop to mobile, or they mm -hmm. clean up the cache, the cache history, right. cache, uh, cache, um, 
so if, if if that happens, it means they will see the ten percent off, which might uh, lead to bad customer experience. So what right. I would recommend to do here: turn off the all regular discount, ten percent, fifteen percent, five percent doesn't matter, and um, have the early bird opt in. When they mm-hmm. opt in, you send them confirmation message and you say, "Hey." Like, congratulations, you will be the first one when we release the discount. But meanwhile, you're waiting. Here's $10 voucher or $20 mm-hmm. voucher, which will expire in, let's say, in the next week or so. And I would strongly recommend to include dollar amount versus discount. There was a brand, uh, I forgot the founder's name, is uh, the brand called Born Primitive. And they have, they use this strategy and they, the results will, were astronomical. The conversion rate for that first email was through the roof. I have a YouTube video where I'm explaining it's something giveaway. Just type in giveaway flow room and you will see this video. And mm-hmm. I described how they do it, the full strategy. But I would prefer to do this kind of strategy versus, uh, have two separate and the mm-hmm. pop ups might show different. But this is my just opinion. Right. Right. Yeah, no, I like the idea of like marrying the two of like combining the Black Friday, Cyber Monday, early bird opt in with like the regular one with this strategy with like strategy of teasing your Black Friday, Cyber Monday deals. Do you think like promoting these deals uh, early might turn off like the regular shoppers? Like, say I just like went to the website and I went to buy something, but then I have a pop up saying like, don't buy anything today. Um, you'll get discounts soon. Will it turn me off from purchasing? What's your thought? I mean, if you say we'll have 50% off during Black Friday, Cyber Monday, so 100%, it will turn the buyers off to buy today. But if you say we have a, de- we will have the, some kind of discount, mm-hmm. but you don't know which, like what kind of discount, um, I don't think it will turn off the buyers and people to buy now. Right, right. How do you uh, promote this approach? Like, way, where do you tease your Black Friday, Cyber Monday uh, deals? Sure. So, uh, uh, whatever opt-in forms you have on your website, I would strongly recommend to replace them with this uh, early bird opt-in, like early access discount. Uh, also, on all of your regular places, social medias, also, since you have many automations going on, and if you use, for example, Clavio, they have a how it's called a universal block uh, mm-hmm. w- where you can kind of insert the banner, and it will update all of your flows, all of your automations, and any campaigns you send from November first to the week of Black Friday, Cyber Monday, include in the footer. Uh, somewhere at the bottom, the banner for them to opt in. And if they opt in, make sure to have a dynamic block so they don't see that block anymore if they already subscribe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Want to discover how much money your email marketing can actually bring you? If that's the case, let our team of email marketing experts show you how. With our free email marketing audit, we'll conduct a comprehensive analysis of your email marketing efforts, provide you with an action plan, and show you how to effectively segment and convert your audience. Simply go to flowium.com slash audit and book your audit today. When preparing your flows for the um, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, well, first of all, do you think that you need to revamp your life cycle strategy for the holiday season or just like keep everything as is and just like update the pop ups? Like, what's your take on that? I personally believe you need to create se- separate set of uh, automations. Uh, you can update the existing one, but it might be messy and you might uh, do make a lot of mistakes. So mm-hmm. I would strongly recommend to have a sec- second set of automation and it's only three automations, not all of them, just three automations, a welcome automation, abandonment cart automation and browser abandonment cart, uh, browser abandonment automation. So the idea here, 
typically brands have discount in welcome in abandon cart and a browser when some kind of you five percent ten percent whatever discount is so the idea here is to remove all those discounts from those automations hmm. because you are teasing this um you will have uh sales during black friday cyber monday but you might ask yeah, it sounds great, but it doesn't make any sense. If somebody starts abandoning the cart, how can I convert them? So you can play on different uh, human emotions like scarcity. You might mm -hmm. say in a Batman cart, listen, we will have busiest time of the year. Like people will start buying like crazy from our store and uh, buy it now because during Black Friday, Cyber Monday, this product might not exist or it will be out of stock. Uh, mm -hmm. So I would strongly recommend to kind of re, uh, refocus from like sales, from promotion, from discount, from free gifts to scarcity that this product might not be available. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. What I've done with some of my brand, brands last year, and I will be doing this year as well, like, uh, for example, in that like welcome flow automation, instead of just like promoting best sellers, like we normally do, or like cross selling recommended products, we created like gift guides, just like to make their process of like purchasing um, easy, simpler, um, and to like uh, educate them on what we have um, on our website and to encourage them to shop, not just for themselves, but for for their loved ones as well. Um, and it just like brings that little nice um, festive touch to your emails as well. What about um, like post-purchase sequences? Do you think they are worth like looking into? Do you think they are worth updating at all? Listen, I mean, you can create, you can update all of your automations, but it's just a matter of um, time. Like right now, I'm not sure when we're publishing this podcast episode, but uh, now it's end of September. And I, right. it's, it's like yesterday was September 1st, and now it's almost end of the S September. And like, like day later, it's like, we'll be black friday cyber monday so i i just don't think uh, right. companies have enough resources if they do it themselves they don't have enough resources unless they work i mean with agencies or they have entire team dedicated uh dedicated to email marketing uh, a funny story we spoke with one brand uh like enterprise level client and they have entire team dedicated to do only lapsed customers in email marketing so just 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 to group like they they even have a team inside of team for email marketing like different departments like for like Crazy. acquire like uh, nur nurturing new new subscribers versus uh, somebody who lapsed that's so cool i mean i wonder if it's effective at all but it sounds really cool it sounds yeah, really so cool especially this if this they, team's they, like they, how you call them big dogs spend money this is how they yeah. do it. <laughs> that's a very american thing though i've just like when I worked with like European teams, even if they are big brands, they're just like spend money differently. That's just like an interesting difference in yeah, mentality. Yeah, of course, because they spend like on the what on the insur like free insurances and like right. the time on, like, off. Two, two months of vacation and stuff like yeah, that, yeah. right? They don't have any money left. In, in, two months of vacation in one quarter. That's true. <laughs> so, Andre, when do you recommend to launch this like rebranded flows, and when do you recommend to turn them off? Yeah, so I would recommend to turn off the uh, to turn them on November, from November first to November twenty first. Why? Right. Because uh, like because this is when your um, uh, early opt-in offer will be live. So you're pretty much like turning on on the entire like echo ecosystem, right? Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's a very just rookie mistake. Just don't forget to turn it back on after Black Friday Cyber Monday. Yeah, that that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> what happens after November twenty first, Andre? What um, like what automations do you recommend to have for that like Christmas season or like holiday season? Uh, what happens then? Sure. So the automation we just discussed, we call them pre black friday cyber monday so it's like before before the black friday cyber monday week so during black friday cyber monday week we, we recommend to update two automations abandonment cart and browser ban and what what we need to do there is to reduce the time delays between emails for example if you abandon cart 
Yeah, if your abandonment card has, let's say, seven email and the the initial strategy when you created was to send it one email per day for Black Cyber Black Friday Cyber Monday, reduce timing so they will get the entire abandonment card maybe in two to three days. Because mm-hmm. remember, we we just have limited time. We have only one week, or if some some brands even have less uh, to to kind of to squeeze the most out of the, your list. Right, right. And you're competing with like so many other brands um, during that time as well. You don't want to. I out. like, I like how uh, uh, from Dale from Wine Awesomeness, and he was on the, one of the first uh, episodes because their strategy, by the way, they, they were acquired by some other big um, wine company. So, but their strategy was to send four emails per day. And I'm like, That's damn, crazy. like, like this is crazy. Like four emails. And, and they had a list of, I don't know, a few millions. Like they were acquiring like two, 200 to 500 per month of new email subscribers. And I'm like, this is crazy. And he said, I'm treating the inbox as a billboard. You know, like when you're driving highway and you <laughs> see different billboards. So he said, like, this is kind of like, you want to be on always on top. Uh, and uh, same thing during Black Friday, Cyber Monday, you want, you want to stand out. Uh, so maybe it's a good strategy for you to add, start adding emoji at the front of the email or do some crazy stuff to see what works to stand out from the, the, the other, the, the, the other senders. Hmm. Yeah, I recorded another video about, um, adding GIF into your avatar. Uh, when you send emails, you know, those mm-hmm. like avatar, which moving. So you opening, right. like you scamming your emails and that avatar is moving. It catch people's attention. So do something. You mean just like catch... the gifts, right? Like the animated gifts or. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. You, yeah. We actually that, tested that this. Judd, Judd coffee or something where the bunny was always jumping, jumping through the hoops or something. No. We, we share it in our great email ch- uh, Slack channel, but it was like probably Maybe two I years go ago. Back. Yeah. Another great um, automation that I've done like last year and I will be doing this year for some of my clients as well is the bounce back automation. Um, basically, when someone just like purchased something, placed an order, and then literally a few minutes later, they are receiving this like additional uh, promotion for the product that they haven't purchased, obviously. So for something different, something ideally uh, low priced, uh, but high margin product. Um, and like, like last year, my client created like specific holiday bundle that we were promoting um, and this like separate products of this holiday bundle, they were great stocking stuffers and that's how we like uh, promoted it. You should be very careful though, because different brands have different sort of like thresholds for free shipping. So you don't want to make your customer pay free ship- pay shipping twice if you don't have like free shipping on your website. And depending of course on what's your, um, what's your checkout experience is, what's your uh, like shipping um, arrangements are, um, you can do that this way, or you can take it to next level and do it through um, like apps that are doing the upsells after the checkout, like Rebuy, I think is doing yeah. that. And they're mm, actually, yes. they were like one of our, one of our guests on the podcast as well. So pretty much you can like automate this process through checkout and not through, and not through the emails. So up to you, there are like different ways to do that. Yeah. By the way, we are mentioning a lot of um, a lot of uh, like resources, videos, mm-hmm. podcasts. So it will be shared under this podcast um, episode, right. in, like with all the links, so you can go and check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Andre, that's actually all of my questions. Thank you so much. Um, it was like, I really loved your strategy of like updating um, the flows and like what to do before the holiday season and after holiday season. And what I also never thought about is that you don't want to be starting like too, too early because you don't want to be conflicting with all of this, like um, holidays, like uh, Halloween and all of this, like fall promotions and stuff like that. So it it makes sense. Yeah. Thank you. Yara. I actually enjoy a lot the you know like our conversation, bringing you know, kind of sharing <laughs> ideas. I learned something new from you, so maybe I will show up more often here. Yeah, yeah, you are always uh, invited, except for next week because next week <laughs> we will have 
<laughs> no, <laughs> actually, was... <laughs> you invited me, but I cannot because I'm going to well, Spain or somewhere. I'm going to Europe really, like, for a workshop. He's going somewhere, as always, you guys. But next week, we will be talking to one and only Neil Patel. Um, we will be discussing all of the trends in email marketing industry and in e-commerce in general. It's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. And uh, yeah, uh, you don't want to miss next Tuesday's episode. Yeah, and don't, yeah. don't forget to, to join the WhatsApp um, group. You yeah. can ask your question. You can ask me questions. You have direct contact. So, like, That's so exciting. Please use this. Yeah, use that resource to kind of to, to learn from us or we will learn from you. Yeah, normally I'm very bad with all of my messengers because I don't have any um, like notifications. Um, I didn't either. So I just like sometimes go like once a month or like once a week and check them. But I will have my notifications on um, for this one. So I will be there to reply to all of your exciting questions. I'm so excited to talk to you guys. Let's hang out on that WhatsApp channel. Thank you so much, Andre. Nice having you. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Hey, if you're watching this and you like what you see, please hit subscribe and hit the bell because it helps us grow our channel.